Yo, 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 welcome back to the fifth round. As always, myself, Steven Musteris, and I was literally just getting ready to upload a video that I recorded yesterday um, just regarding uh, UFC 264 losing its uh, first first fight on the main card, which was Sugar Sean O'Malley was supposed to take on Luis Smoka, and just yesterday, Luis Smoka backed out due to, you know, some injuries that they weren't talking about. I don't even know if it was injuries. Maybe, maybe COVID, who knows? They have no idea, but um, anyway, I leave Sugar Sean O'Malley, you know, some, no opponent, and it looked like they wanted to keep him on there for next, uh, next Sunday, uh, July 10th, and I know if you're, if you're on the Sugar Show just like I am, like, you, you love him, you know, you want to see him do good, and it's perfect for him right now to, to raise that star, and, you know, to really get it going, and get that light even brighter on a Conor McGregor card, especially against Dustin Poirier 3, it's just, it's gonna be perfect for Sugar Sean, and it's been shaping up, and I was a little skeptical even in the first place for them to even, uh, get him to fight Luis Smoka. I thought it was a step backwards compared to Thomas Almeida. And I know Thomas Almeida has been on a, uh, on a little downhill slope for a while, but he started off like a solid nine, nine fight win streak or eight fight win streak or something crazy before the last recent skid. But still, I definitely think he was better than Luis Smoka at a certain point. And I don't know, but Luis Smoka backs out um, almost perfect. I was really pushing for the the Marab fight or uh, even a Cody Stamen fight. I really liked it, or Ricky Simon. Um, all three of them were calling him out. Marab being number 10, I thought would be huge for Sugar Sean. Um, I definitely was saying about how I didn't like the matchup that well just because I think Marab might push the pace and it seems like he's been training still and whatnot. And it, it, he could probably make a really long night for Sugar, but if – if Sean would knock him out, that would be the perfect fighter for him to be like, oh, shit, nobody finishes this guy other than one little false time like a couple years ago. But um, So right before I go to post that, they find him a new opponent, and everybody's waiting to see who it is, and it's a UFC newcomer, Chris, I think, Mutino or something. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't know who the guy is. I just looked him up. Um, he won his last two fights, uh, TKO this year, or submission this year, and TKO in October. And then he had a, he got knocked out twice in 2019. So I mean, he's two and two in his last four, nine and four total. And I don't know. I'm just sitting here scratching the head on this one. I just don't, I don't understand where the UFC is going with uh, Sugar Sean. Um, I mean, I, I'm an MMA fan, that's for sure. Um, sadly, I was, I mean, I was born in '93, so I've got to watch some really, really big profile boxing fights, but I never got to watch you know, the prime, like in the 80s and early 90s and whatnot. So I can't talk much on it. But the reason I love MMA so much, other than some things, but like is especially in the UFC, they're always talking about how the top dogs fight the top dogs. And there's there's no easy fight. And there's no build-up fight. And yeah, here we are with Sugar Sean, who he's ready to explode. He's exploding on YouTube, exploding on social media. He's, he's been exploded every, every time he knocks somebody out and has the, the ball or the Kobe or any, anything. He's got the greatest, greatest hairstyles, the charisma. He smokes weed. So he, you know, the demographic and he's just this star ready to be born. And we're sitting out here sending him against a, a, a new newcomer to the UFC. He's never even fought in the UFC. And, it's like I get it, short notice and whatnot, but I don't, it's tough when you got three guys, especially two of them for sure, right in front of him, like 13, 14, or 14, 15, and Ricky Simon and um, Cody Stamen, which would have been phenomenal fights for this man. And even to say Marab, even a bigger fight would have been huge for both of those guys. And yeah, we're sitting here picking the newcomer. I get short notice and whatnot, but it's like, dude, put this. you got to build this guy. Don't be throwing him against cans. And it's like... The reason I always hate when we see these is because you're taking the chance of like, like look at Anthony Josh when he got knocked out by Andy Ruiz. Nobody knew who Andy Ruiz was at the time, and he was and Anthony Josh was ducking all the big fights with Fury and Wilder, and it's he goes out and gets knocked out, and like don't get me wrong, he got the revenge and whatnot, but I just hate it because I could easily see Sugar Sugar Show goes out this next weekend, gets knocked out by newcomer nine and four. His, his stock lowers significant, significantly compared to losing to a Marab in a, in a just a grueling fight 
or a Cody Stamen or a Ricky Simon who have already got some credit built up in the UFC. So it's like, I don't know. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Chances are high he's going to win. There's probably a very low chance he loses. But still, it's just like I don't I don't understand what the UFC is doing right now. I just posted a video of of good old Derek Lewis and Cyril Gans matchup being announced. And I don't know. I'm really sitting here questioning MMA right now, and especially the UFC, I should say, not MMA, but the UFC in general as an organization. So, but hey, this has been the the, the UFC. Huh. This has been the fifth round, as always, Stephen Musteris. And if you guys liked it, please check it out. More videos, comments, subscribe. You know the deal. So, have a good one.